Hey, this is David for Big Bits, and in this video, we're going to go over our seventh script in our Pine Script tutorial for TradingView development. And in this video, we are actually going to discuss different resolutions. And this isn't, you know, like a New Year's resolution in TradingView. We are talking about a resolution as far as what we are looking at. Uh, kind of like the display resolution on a monitor. So uh, in trading view terms, this is usually what time frame you're looking at. This is what they refer to as the resolution in their documentation. So you can see the different resolutions available. Uh, some of these are only available to pro accounts or premium accounts. So uh, be mindful of that. But what we're going to do in this video is we're actually going to set our moving averages that we've been working on to be able to be calculated based off of a different resolution and by that I mean uh, well let me just show you so in the chart here we have three lines we have a green a yellow and a red now in the past by default these have been the 50 period the 100 and the 200 now I've decided to do it a little bit different since we've added resolutions we're looking at a four hour chart the green line here is a 50 period. Let me pull up these settings to make it a little bit more clear. This is a 50 period using the current resolution, which is the four hour. Now the yellow line, it is actually the 200 day moving average. You can see we set the period to 200 and the resolution to one day. Now I'm going to explain how this works in just a moment, but you can also see the 100 week moving average is the red line here as well because we changed the resolution to one week now why is this important well just look at this chart you can see where it can be helpful to look at different resolutions on a single chart so if you're looking at trading on a four hour chart it's probably a good idea to be mindful of daily and weekly trends uh, I guess just a general uh, bit of uh, a helpful hint, I suppose, is that when you're trading uh, smaller time frames, like 5 minutes, 15 minutes, it's, I think, in my opinion, a very good idea to look towards larger time frames for the overall trend that you're working in. Otherwise, uh, if the daily were to dump and you were thinking that the 15-minute candle looks really good and it's going to go up so you bought it, well, the daily trend is fighting against you, and it's a much larger trend than anything you can find on 15 minutes. So I mean, that's definitely not uh, real financial advice. It's just something I've seen from experience, okay? So just keep that in mind. And you can see on this chart, we're looking at a 50-day moving average going down, which if you look recently, this looks like it's been acting as resistance, okay? Now... I have made some live stream videos here and I've talked about the Bitcoin price and I mentioned the 200 day moving average and I said once we first broke out of this consolidation I was looking for a target of the 200 day moving average because typically in the past it has held as support in various occasions and it did it held as support even though the price did wick below it held as support for some time then once it was broken it acted as resistance and that happens fairly often in trading is when you have a support get broken it becomes resistance now that's what we're trying to use these moving averages to determine I can't tell you how to do that that's entirely up to you but just looking at this chart it looks like there's a pretty good pattern there that could show you where support and resistance may be and then of course finally there's also this 100 week moving average which it touched once with the wicks and then again later on and bounced off of it so it appears based on this chart that the price is pretty much stuck between support and resistance and it's likely in a range so that's how I would use this indicator but you're more than welcome to use it however you want it's always important in my mind to keep these larger time frames like the daily in mind like I've mentioned because they are much more important in the grand scheme of things than uh, you know the 15 minute like I mentioned so let's continue into the code now that you've seen what you're getting out of this now you 
well, there's one more thing I forgot to mention, the forecasting. You notice there's no forecasting on the different resolutions. This is uh, due to the way the forecasting works and the way it's plotted on the chart. And I'll probably explain that a little bit better. But when you change the resolution from anything other than the current resolution, it's, it's not going to show up. And I'll explain that later. But there's a very good reason for it. Now, let's get into the code. Uh, really, everything is the same going down until finally when we want to actually calculate our moving averages things are a little bit different and one of the things I had to do for this was I had to create a function to help us determine what resolution we're working with now you'll notice on the inputs that we had that the resolution drop down had these numbers and then the resolution that you're actually wanting to work with. And the reason I did this was because if we just listed these all like this, they would be completely out of order uh, from what you would expect. Okay. And we couldn't have had the current on there if we just used the built in resolution type. Now, a lot of charts or a lot of indicators, I should say, that I've seen that have the ability for you to select the uh, custom resolution seem to have been based on the idea that you would use the resolution uh, enumerator that's built into PineScript as the input option or the input type. Well, I'm actually using a string. That way, we don't have to have a checkbox if you want to use the current and then also have a drop down for all the other options. I think it's a little bit cleaner and a little bit friendlier for the user to only have the one drop down and just have a default to current form. So how do we actually accomplish getting the correct resolution out of this? Like I said, we have a function and we pass in our resolution. I'll get into the rest of this in just a moment, but the, the resolution codes first. So let's go over that. To determine what resolution is, all you do is you call the resolution function and you pass in whatever the moving average resolution was that was selected from that dropdown. Since it's a string, we're going to have to compare it to uh, what we would expect. So, well, let's go back up here. One more thing that's slightly different. We had to add the options and the input for the resolution. I said everything was the same. My bad, it wasn't. We actually added an input for the resolution on these, and we had to have these specific options declared. Otherwise, you could have set the type to uh, input.resolution, I believe. And this is why I said we went this way, so we wouldn't have to have a checkbox to make it use the current. Okay, back to where we were. We have the default value set here, and we've passed whatever they've selected in as their input into the resolution function here. And it's going to go through and check each condition that we've identified. And if it has current, it's going to use this contextual information and contextual or metadata, however you want to call it. This is just information about the chart that we're looking at. And this is the period of the time frame for the chart. And it's kind of confusing. They use the word resolution. They use the word period. Other people just say time frame. So there's, there's several different words, and you're really just talking about the candle length. So just keep that in mind. And then we got to return appropriate values. Anything under one day is measured in minutes. You see one minute is just one. But once you get up to one hour, the value that it's expecting back is 60 because it's in minutes. And then four hours is 240. Once you get the days, uh, you have to have the one and the capital D. And it'll know that that is the one day resolution and so forth with weeks and months. Okay, so let's get back into the actual moving average calculations. And in order for us to do it based on a potentially different resolution, we have to use what's called the security function here. And this is uh, going to use information we pass in to calculate the moving average on that particular security. And the reason we would do that is because if it is on a different resolution, it might not be the one that we're looking at on the chart. So some more contextual or metadata information about this particular chart is the ticker ID. Now it's usually this information up here. Um, for us, we're not looking at any other type of security. We're only focused on the data in the chart. So say for example, you actually wanted to change what chart you wanted the moving average from say not only did you want to set the resolution to one week but maybe you wanted the one week uh, 
or the 50 week, I should say, moving average on gold. If you knew the ticker ID for gold, you could pass it into security and give it the appropriate resolution and MA information, and it would calculate the 50 week for gold and put it on your Bitcoin chart. Uh, I mean, they already have ways to do that using the compare feature, but this is uh, another way that you could do that. Although the compare, I think, uh, uses the same resolution. So this way would allow you to look at different resolutions on different securities. Now, I haven't tried that, so I can't say for sure that works. Maybe we'll try that in the future here. But uh, that's what I would expect this to work. And we can look at the information on security. You can see how that is expected to work here. Let me close that. All right. Um, so, yeah, you can see how this is expected to work. Uh, get all the information about it and I'll just tell you there's a lot here and it's not really that hard what we're dealing with with our script is the uh, moving average mostly this is probably the most confusing part but when we call the security function I've already told you about the ticker ID I've already told you about the resolution now we also have to tell it to calculate our moving average based on that moving average information We've already done this in the previous video, so we don't have to rewrite this. You just have to know that in order to return the value for the moving average of that security, you have to put that expression here in order to calculate that. Now, uh, that might be a little bit confusing at first, but the code works, so you can see for yourself. All right, let's see what else we had here. I know there was a couple of other things. Oh, I did want to discuss the forecasting. That was the other thing that was really important. Uh, we, we talked about the forecasting in the last video, but uh, it's uh, as I told you earlier in this video, it's not available when you change the resolution. And the reason I did this was because, and if you've watched the last video, you'll understand this a lot better. So if, if you don't know what I'm talking about with forecasting and how that works, please go back to the last video and watch that because it'll explain this way better than I'm going to do right now. But Essentially, when we're forecasting these values out ahead, we're always calculating the next value out on the current chart. So it's very easy for us to calculate the forecasted value of the next uh, daily moving average. But the issue is we're on a four hour chart, so we would have to determine exactly how many spots on the x-axis we would need to offset that value now by default we just do the one because we're only looking at the current chart but the flexibility of this particular indicator makes it a little difficult we would have to do some sort of calculation to determine how many offsets it would take and even then if you're looking at smaller resolutions say for example you wanted the five minute uh, the five minute moving average on the four hour chart uh, how are we supposed to do that? There's many, many sets of five minutes within four hours. You can't display that on the x-axis here appropriately. So that's why they're not on there. It's pretty straightforward, actually, but uh, it'll make a lot more sense if you're having a hard time following me now. If you've watched the previous video, like I said, it makes perfect sense to me because I'm the one who wrote it. But if you don't understand, watch the last video. It'll probably make a lot more sense once you understand how the forecasting works in general. But, uh, you know, I think that's it for this video. We've got pretty much everything covered with the forecasting. Now, if you want to see this indicator go in a different direction and you want to see more features added, please leave a comment. Let me know. You can always check out my TradingView profile and see all of the different scripts that I've published. I recently published a smooth RSI script. And if you're looking at this, the pictures may be different because the code can change. We can add and remove features over time to make these indicators even better or to remove features that weren't necessary, whatever it takes. Leave your feedback. You can leave it on YouTube in the comments, or you can leave it on TradingView uh, when you reply back to these particular scripts. And I also post ideas here as well. Uh, I've been busy working on the script, so I haven't had a lot of ideas posted on TradingView, but we'll, we'll get there. We're, we're building up, building more content, and we're working on this series. So 
that is it for now. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please leave a like on the video, of course. Uh, subscribe if you have liked this video as well, because I'm going to be doing a lot of videos related to this same sort of information, usually some sort of trading-related development, and most of the trading is related to crypto, of course. So please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you and have a good day and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.